purple, the mixer brush, and armpits. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite arts. And I'm beginning a new series on the channel. And it's a series that I've wanted to do for a very long time that is essentially short segments of information that is almost reminders or tips, if you will, both in Photoshop and in photography. These short segments will be based upon really two things. One, whether it's ideas that jump into my head as I'm doing my own work thinking, ooh, I should remind people of this or show them how to do this on the YouTube or comments and questions that are coming in from folks who have watched the previous videos on the channel and they may be struggling with one of the aspects of the tutorials. Specifically today, what we're gonna talk about is the mixer brush and how it's used in frequency separation. And the reason why I wanna mention this today is because I've been getting a lot of great comments and questions and messages from folks saying they love the retouching series here on the channel. If you haven't seen it, by the way, take a look at the card above. It will take you to it when you're done with this video. But they've been telling me that they are not quite getting the same results as they see in my work and they're asking questions about the mixer brush. So I want to remind you of how the mixer brush works, its power, its uses in an image, but I also want to talk about some photography tips because as I travel on my journey, now more than ever with the YouTube channel, I consistently keep thinking about things that I have encountered in my history of this career and how new folks are stepping in, whether you are a hobbyist or a passing interest in photography or you're deciding to pursue it as a career. And as you're stepping in, I want to be able to help you make it past some of those barriers that I encountered long ago. So let's dive into Photoshop. We're gonna talk about the mixer brush and then a quick tip for photography to finish up the tutorial today. Introductions, as always, to get us started. This is my wonderful friend, Janelle. You've seen her in a previous video here on the channel. If you'd like to see more of her amazing artwork, visit the Instagram account at the link below. This is the image that we'll be using the mixer brush on. We're gonna be using it specifically on the color layer in the layer stack itself. But before we get there, I want to do a recap of what the mixer brush is and then show you two different brush strokes that I often use in retouching that have two completely different results. So the mixer brush is Photoshop's digital equivalent of a traditional painter's mixer brush. A painter would use that brush to introduce new paint to the existing colors on the canvas or use a clean brush to simply start mixing the colors on the canvas together to get a different result. Same thing in Photoshop. One of the key controls of the mixer brush to make sure that you have checked is this icon here that says clean the brush after each stroke. So I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet with the pen. What I'm going to do for stroke number one is to simply sample the color here blue move it over to the red and then start mixing them together, which should produce the color purple because blue and red combined makes the color purple. With this icon checked, as I'm mixing everything together, it's not going to sample anything new until I lift the pen. And when I lift the pen, it's cleaning the brush, which is key because when I touch the, the image or the tablet again, if I did not have a clean brush, it would use whatever color we just did as the new source to start blending things together. So I'm gonna make contact with the pen to the tablet, move the paint over, and I'm gonna start moving it back and forth and it's mixing everything together, creating that color purple. Now, when I lift the pen, this area in the checkerboard is clear. If I did not have this icon checked, you would see a perfect circle of whatever we sampled as that color here, showing you the source or the paint on the brush. So that first stroke is literally just to mix the colors together. Make contact one time to the tablet or use your mouse and click, sample the colors, and then just start blending them together into the scene. But I wanna show you the second stroke that I often use, and that's to move color from one place in the image somewhere else without mixing it at all. So I'm going to make contact with the pen. I'm gonna move the blue paint over and then lift the pen. And I'm gonna keep repeating that. I'm lifting the pen, it's removing the paint, cleaning the brush, and then moving it over. And it's not mixing it, it's not turning it purple, it's just moving the blue wherever I want it to go. Now you'll notice that we're starting to get some bizarre lined patterns in this. Keep in mind, this is a part of the digital algorithm trying to represent, quote, the mixer brush and producing these different results. This isn't a reflection of my computer, by the way. I use a PC that has an Intel i7 8th generation chip, a RT uh, 2060 super video card, 32 gigs of memory. My computer is like the Whopper from War Games. It's a great computer, so it's 
not the results of that. Ultimately, it's just the digital process. So for some of the folks who may be getting some bizarre color patterns as they're using the mixer brush in a retouch of a human person, keep in mind as the brush is trying to render things, that's entirely possible. That's where you can go back to that first stroke. So when you're using the second stroke, moving color from one place to another, go back to the stroke number one and simply just blend it all together to make sure that all the transitions are soft. Also keep in mind that the mixer brush is a soft edge brush. It's not a hard delineating line on the outside of it. So even though this circle representing the brush tip is inside the blue, if I get too close to the edge, it can potentially sample some of the outer white and pull it in to the scene as we're seeing like that. Yes, my, my brush came right here to the edge and you would think, well, that's not very much to pull into there. But keep in mind, the mixer brush's job is to sample all the existing color it sees inside the circle. So yes, it's supposed to be seeing a lot of blue, but it's seeing just a little bit of white and it's pulling it into the scene. We see those really harsh delineating lines here, just smooth them together by using that first brush stroke with the mixer brush itself. So let's go to the picture with Janelle and we'll talk about how I use that. So my favorite place to use the mixer brush in a beauty image like this is to start pulling colors that are softer and lighter and moving them into areas of three dimensionality on the human person. So if we look at this, we can see there's some darker skin tone right here right around her elbow that's the bone inside of her arm we have these bright colors coming in the light the sun is setting off camera left and it's coming into the scene so we see the bright colors here the lighter colors here they're in shadow but this stronger little color right there again that's the three-dimensional nature of her body so on the color layer in the frequency separation stack I'm simply just going to make contact one time and then push paint down and then mix it just a little bit right at the end. Make contact, pull it down, and I could just keep using that second stroke and I'm just pulling the lighter colors down into the scene and covering up any of those darker crevices. I can do the same thing again and start pulling the darker tones up and just push them through a little bit and then use that first stroke with a little bit of a bigger brush just to kind of blend it all together to make sure that it all looks good. I can go through here and start pulling the lighter colors down just to make that little highlight line have a little bit more symmetry and a little bit more of a graceful flow. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. We can see here we have the brighter colors coming in. It's wrapping around. It's hitting her nose. We have this little band right through here of darker skin tone. Now, every human being has bags under their eyes. It's not a reflection of lack of sleep or skincare, anything like that. It's just the way that we're made. So we've got just a little bit of a crevice here where we have that darker skin tone that delineates the 3D nature of her face. So if I use the mixer brush, sample this brighter color here and just start pushing it up into those dark areas, I can start blending all of that and ultimately taking a little bit of that darker tone away. I'm pulling the lighter colors outside, being careful not to go too far up into her eye because I don't want to necessarily remove all of the shadows in the scene, just start blending them together. Now, you could use the traditional brush in Photoshop, sample the lighter color and just paint over the darker areas if you want to using this blank layer here in the frequency separation stack. Just by the way, if you're new to the channel, you're here and you have no idea what I'm talking about, really make sure to look at that video series when you're done with this one because there's in-depth guides on frequency separation, the mixer brush and so forth. There's actually a video in there that gives you a free action, my Retouch 3.0 action. It's the action that I use for all of my artwork to populate frequency separation, dodging and burning and enhancing the eyes. So check that video series out when you're done. As I'm blending all this together, again, using the basic brush, I could introduce new color and just paint with it. The reason why I don't is because the basics brush job is to use one color of paint and put it down on top of everything else. The mixer brush's job is to use all of the colors. Yes, you get to designate what is the sample color that I want you to use, but the mixer brush uses that as a resource to start blending it together. We get more natural transitions of color all through this area rather than just simply sampling one color and then painting over the entire area. So that's why I like to use the mixer brush for this kind of blending, and it's the first tool that I use when I start the frequency separation process. I use the clone stamp tool on the detail layer to remove textures and so forth that we need to, to take out of the image. And then I use the mixer brush on the color layer first before I start using the basic brush to introduce new colors into the scene. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was a photography tip. And it's ultimately about starting out. When I started out, 
I was trying to learn so many things at once, like what an f-stop is, the shutter speed, what's the best camera to buy, and all those kinds of things. But I was spending a lot of time learning about composition, the elements that go into making a quote-unquote beautiful portrait. So I was learning things like the rule of thirds or things like don't let the horizon line cut through somebody's head. And as I started to find rules, I encountered more and more and more rules coming from multiple sources that it started to feel like people were just making up rules and saying they were rules because ultimately it's what made them feel happy about the picture. I was hearing things like, don't show the back of the model's hand, don't show the inside of the model's hand, don't show the side of their hand, make sure their hands are in the photo. I'm not kidding, I've heard all of that. And I'm like, you don't wanna see what, how, what? And so it became so challenging to try to follow all these rules that I was ultimately skipping past the most important part of the image and that's the impact the emotion the story that's there as i was calling these images from our session with janelle i land on this image and i saw her eyes and her expression and i went oh my gosh this picture is amazing and i tagged it and i knew that i would edit it and use it potentially for a youtube video guess what now we are i could have skipped past this because there is technically a flaw in this picture according to some of the rules out there and it's we can see her armpits She's wearing a sleeveless top. Her hands are beautifully weaved into her hair, but we can see her armpits. And I've heard, don't show models armpits. That looks bad. So what is it? Because I have to, but their hands and their hair is a great pose, right? Don't let something as minor like this stand in the way of an image that makes great contact and has great story. Her hands into her hair, her arms up like this. This could be a classic sensual element to the pose, but look at the mystery in her eyes. We don't see that little sexy smirk in her lips or the twinkle in her eyes. There is a challenge there. There's a story there. This is a testament to her ability as a model, and I absolutely love this juxtaposition of sensuality yet intrigue and story. And I'm so happy that I didn't ditch this file because someone once long ago said, don't show armpits, it's terrible. So we can use the mixer brush to take care of of what might draw or draw somebody's attention to the armpits itself. And I'm simply going to use that second gesture or second stroke. And I'm just going to tap once, pull the color down and keep moving it down over the darker skin tones that we see into the scene. I'm gonna bring the lighter ones up and then just use that first stroke and blend everything together. Let's go over to the other armpit using the first gesture and just kind of smoothing it all together, stroke, gesture, whichever one you like, and pushing this all together and then it's done. Now we can see lines and the crevices in her skin, that's the detail layer itself, so we'd have to use the clone stamp to remove all of that, but ultimately we have softened those colors, we've softened those transitions, and hopefully nobody's going to look at this and go, I love her mesmerizing eyes, but those armpits are just distracting and rule breaking hideous armpits so <laughs> let's have some final thoughts and finish up this quip tip for today in regard to the mixer brush make sure if you're not familiar with it or frequency separation to look at the retouching series when you're done with this one but hopefully those reminders of those two brush strokes will help some of the folks who are getting just odd patterns in color or just need that refresher to understand how to move the colors around during the frequency separation process but i want to touch back on the photography tip and ultimately rule following it is important to learn the rules especially the rules of composition and what makes a good portrait I simply just don't want you to get caught up in trying to make sure that your image fits every single rule, that it sacrifices that key element of impact, emotion, and story. Far too often, we get stuck when we're stepping into photography thinking, well, if I learn all the rules and I follow them, then I should be a, quote, good photographer. You may find that your images follow every single rule, but if it lacks passion and heart and emotion and story, it's going to fall flat. Make sure you pay attention to the rules so you know when to break them. And if your image has that story and it invites the audience to stay with it and go with the journey with you in the imagery, then ultimately a few minor rules being broken makes your image that much more unique. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the content you found in it, make sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks again, and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.